Hi everyone. So today we're having a look at Nigeria in West Africa, which is a newly emerging economy. And this is your case study um, for the changing economic world. Now, I've broken it up into socio-economic development, uh, which is to do with people and um, the economy, so money um, in a newly emerging economy. Um, we'll have a bit about its importance and um, then finally transnational corporations in newly emerging economies. So this will be everything you need to know, well, in a nutshell, for Nigeria um, for your exams. So coming on to people, always start with kind of the population and things. Now Nigeria is well known for having a really booming population. At the moment, it's at 184 million people, but this is rapidly growing, rapidly increasing. And it's set by 2050 to have the fourth largest in the world. So it's expected to be the fourth, fourth largest by 2050. We also can see that it has, if we come on to economic development, um, a huge uh, amount of GDP. To be precise, $500 billion per year. Billion per year GDP. So compared to the rest of Africa, this is going to be the largest, um, most sort of amount of money, the richest country in Africa. And that's largely due to oil reserves. It used to be, before they discovered oil, um, farming and crops. And there is still quite large exports of crops and manufactured goods, but largely due to oil these days. If you want to just draw kind of an oil barrel. Uh, black gold, as they call it. Now, because of finding the oil, there's been a 30% increase, um, that's a percentage increase, um, in secondary employment. Now remember, secondary employment is things like manufacturing and oil mining. So just put that in brackets. This has correlated with a 30% decrease, so the same amount, in the primary sector. So that would have been things like farming. Uh, so primary employment has decreased. This is good news for Nigerians. Um, that means that more and more of them are growing up and getting involved in industry and therefore earning more money and getting better paid jobs than farming. So this has led to a positive multiplier effect. Multiplier effect. And that's a real key term to be using anywhere really in paper two, but particularly for Nigeria. So the multiplier effect is the feeding down of money from one place to another. So with more and more people getting into um, secondary employment, we're starting to see things like higher pay for individuals. This leads to better quality of life because they're able to pay for things like um, better food, better health care, perhaps um, even education for the children. So better quality of life, including things like um, health care, So improved healthcare. Remember, everywhere they're spending money, that's feeding back into the local economy. So better healthcare um, and education. Uh, but we do need to remember, big but here, um, there is a huge gap between the rich 
who are, you know, invest getting lots of money through investment and things, and also the oil industry um, and the poor. And sometimes that gap is widening, widening. Okay. Okay, but there is a big gap. Right. If we go on to look a bit more at Nigeria itself, um, there is also quite a big gap between the north and the south. Now in the north of Nigeria, it's a really large country in West Africa, in the north you see quite dry conditions, quite dry grasslands, quite hard to farm that area. And then in the south, it's really close to the Tropic of Cancer, so kind of tropical climate. Um, much better for growing crops like um, green beans that end up on our tables and in our supermarkets. Now, not only is it hard to farm in the north, so less crops being grown, but there is also quite high terrorism. Um, terrorism. Uh, with Boko Haram. So if you are visiting Nigeria, it's highly uh, unlikely that you would go anywhere near the north. And this has led to quite a lot of uh, rural to urban migration and people moving from the south, um, sorry, moving from the north to the south. Uh, and that's where we see quite a lot of political power in the south. Now we did mention uh, previously that there's this large gap between the rich and the poor um, and I want to just put that into a kind of diagram here so we've got um, a really distribution of wealth being highly unequal um, so if we just write there distribution of wealth so that's how it's sort of spread around and um, 60% which is a significant number uh, of people live on less than $1.25 a day. And that's what we call the sort of um, poverty line, if you like. Uh, so they live below the poverty line. Some families existing with almost no money at all and just subsistence farming, just getting by on enough that they can grow. Um, not only that, but the literacy rate, so this is the amount of people who can read and write, um, is 40%. So that's really significant. This means that their access to employment opportunities um, is really low. Um, and that means that also, you know, many of them aren't finishing school. Um, over here, on the high side, we see that six thousand people um, suffer unavoidable deaths so for example six thousand people every year die from malaria now malaria is a completely preventable disease when i visited the gambia uh, a few years ago now you know I, you take anti-malaria medication or if you you have a anti-malaria net these aren't expensive options um, but unfortunately lots and lots of people dying from a really preventable disease shows just how big that distribution of wealth um, gap between the rich and the poor is and I guess the really key thing that we can look at to sort of tell a country's development is um, life expectancy now life expectancy in this country is pretty good Depends roughly where you live, there's a bit of a gap between the north and south. Um, but I'm sure you'll be shocked to know that life expectancy in Nigeria is 57 years. That's on average how long Nigerians are expected to live for. I'm just going to draw a line across there. Right, let's have a look at the importance of Nigeria. And we're going to break this up. We're going to break it up into regional, national, and global. Okay, so regionally, Nigeria is super important because it has the highest population in the whole of Africa. So we're just gonna pop the person in there again. 
and an arrow and put the largest population in all of Africa. As we know, it's going to, or it's expected to grow to the fourth largest in the world by 2050. And it has currently 184 million people. In a different infographic, we look at Lagos, which is one of their centers for economic growth. And that is expected to have 40 million people living in it by 2035. Um, and therefore will be the third largest mega city in the world. So this is a country that is developing at a very, very fast pace. It's also nationally important because it is the richest nation um, or richest country in Africa. And again, that's largely down to its um, high exports of oil. Now, luckily, um, Nigeria is part of an organisation called OPEC, which is the Organisation of Petroleum Exporting Countries. And the good news about OPEC is that they set the price for oil. And o OPEC is an organisation of 20 countries, the 20 highest producing countries, um, so right up there with like countries in the Middle East, Nigeria is able to determine what price it wants for its oil along with those other major nations which have oil to sell. Now finally, globally, um, Nigeria is part of the mint countries. This is Mexico, India, Nigeria of course, and Turkey. Now what's interesting about these countries is they're all newly emerging economies. They're all growing fast, they all have high populations and booming economies. They do still have quite big gaps between the rich and the poor, but they are expected, put lots of arrows here, they are expected to overtake high income countries uh, in the future, such as France and Italy in the future. Okay, which moves us on to, finally, our transnational corporations in newly emerging economies. A lot of words. Let's just remember that transnational means a, a company that has um, offices and um, factories and things in different countries it's transnational it's operating in more than one country and a corporation just means a business now our example is going to be shell oil shell oil has been in nigeria for some time now and it has both good and bad um parts to its um, incorporation in Nigeria. Now, it's located in Nigeria in terms of its actual oil mining and oil production, but the headquarters, so where the people behind the business, are in Holland, which is actually very close to the UK, just across the channel. Now, what this tells us is where the real money is, is in Holland. And that, I mean, Shell Oil has lots of locations around the world where it um, collects oil, but Nigeria is one of the largest. Now, we're just going to have a quick look at the sort of positives and the negatives of this one, because there have been and there will be in the future quite large exam questions, nine markers and so on, that will will be focused on this, so it's really good for you to have some ideas. So, on the positive side, and this is a big, big positive, 90% of um, all the workers who work for Shell Oil in Nigeria are Nigerian. Now, this is huge. 
because that means that they are getting jobs and a lot of them are getting jobs. I haven't got the exact number, but it's high. Um, not a positive, but just worth mentioning here. These are generally low pay jobs and long hours, but they are jobs. And let's face it, it's better than being unemployed. So it's really good news that they are actually employing Nigerian um, workers to work on the shell oil. In addition to that, them getting paid and bringing money into the local economy, there is the tax income. Now we often talk about governments, you know, using tax to pay for healthcare, housing, education, but the tax income just from Shell Oil alone, just from that corporation operating there, is a huge $1.4 billion. And that is every single year, at least that much. Now that income goes on things like new schools. It goes on things like new hospitals. And those things benefit, directly benefit local people. So that's all really good news directly benefit Nigerians. But it's not all good news, okay? So there's 4% of jobs that aren't going to Nigerians. Um, and these jobs tend to be the ones that aren't low pay. These are the high pay jobs. So 4% of jobs go overseas to workers, often actually in the UK, maybe the USA, and these are high pay and um, much shorter hours and also arguably much less taxing. Now, other than the negatives for sort of jobs and things, the big one has to be the oil spills. If you think about Shell Oil, think about it in Nigeria, it's the oil spills. There have been 7,000 oil spills. And as I say that, it shocks me every time I say it. And there have been 7,000 oil spills just in five years, in the last five years. Now these oil spills have had lots and lots of negative impacts. They have caused farmland, I'll just draw some trees, to be destroyed. Okay, absolutely devastated by the oil. And that has meant that people are unable, the farmers are unable to grow any crops because the ground is so contaminated and toxic. The other thing is that water, not supposed to be water, um, has been contaminated too. So what's happened is it the oil has run off into the rivers and into the water supply and it's contaminated the water. And that has led, in turn, very, very bad fish, um, to fish dying. So less fish. And these are fish that were needed. You know, they were the local people were farming for these fish and actually using them to export to make money or even to feed themselves. Now, the oil spills have been so significant that even if, all of the oil spills were stopped um, basically very soon. They would take 30 years to clean up. So these are significant oil spills. And you might want to know why they've been caused. Well, they've been caused by overland pipes. Now, overland pipes are cheaper, much cheaper than digging down into the ground to run oil pipes but they are obviously subject to damage, subject to attacks. And that's what's happened. So basically thieves have come along, damaged the pipes to steal oil and then cause, or basically left it like a tap turned on, left it turned on. And because they've been badly monitored as well, the um, shell oil aren't aware and that's what's caused all this devastation for the environment and, and also for people. 
So there you have it, your Nigeria um, in West Africa, a newly emerging economy, and you can look at the socio-economic development, you can look at it, its importance, and you can also look at transnational corporations there, one of which your main case study is Shell Oil.